Mm, let's see where we're at. Let me let, let me then kind of kind of kind of summarize summarize where we were, what I was doing last few times, and then we'll get on to kind of a different different ver you know, different applications, same kind of idea of, of this idea about supersymmetry. So 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 far. So what we were doing was we were, we were taking the um, let's see. So we wanted to to quantize um, there's okay, two copies of, of an of an R two uh, of an even dimensional phase space. One is a uh, and this one. So 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 this was the boson. Bosonic. This one was fermionic, and the, and the, the quantization went kind of completely, completely parallel. Or the whole kind of story about um, whole story went parallel. So, so here you had uh, a, a basis of a basis of co coordinates Q, QJ, and PJ, and here you had coordinates that I called. Um, Xi j, and that they're an even number. They're you know, so they're so they're d of the each of these and two d of these, and then when we um, but then what you could do is you could you could pick a complex structure. You could identify this with with C d, and then you had coordinates z j and z bar j, and here you had theta j and theta j bar, and then what happened when, when you you, so then, when you when you quantize, um, what ha what happens is that these guys become be become operators, and either QJ or PJ operators, or these guys, you can think of as kind of bosonic. Well. Bosonic uh, annihilation creation operators, okay. and here these guys became one square root two. It became gamma gamma matrices, or if you like, you could you can think of it. These guys, once you have the complex structure, is giving you fermionic annihilation. And creation operators, and this this process of quantization was really um, so you, you can think of this as being a that the you can think of all, you know e, e, either this line or, or, or this line you can think of these as the basis elements of a um, as giving the basis of, of, of a Lie super algebra um, using the uh, the Poisson bracket on these guys and then whatever your um, Using typically an inner product or some kind of symmetric um, by the near form over here, and so 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 here you had a, a Lie super algebra of, of, of these guys, and then the um, you know with and, and I wrote the bracket as just a kind of plus one bracket, but plus or minus. And, and then, then when you quantize, in, in, in some sense, what, what you're doing is, again, you're taking a unitary representation of this Lie super algebra. You're just generalizing your know, idea of what a unitary representation of Lie algebra is. And you're getting these guys. And this bracket becomes just a, sometimes I write as a super bracket, but it, it's basically a it's a bracket, which just means that you have to take commutator or anti-commutator of operators, depending upon whether on the evenness and the oddness of what's in the two places. Okay, so this, so this was the picture. Okay, and then and then you had the the, the space that these these thing these things acted on. You could take it to be um, H B. Uh, if you're thinking in, the, in terms of these guys, you you, you needed to take Kind of functions on half of them, typically functions of the Q, or if you're thinking in terms of these guys, you could do Bartman Fock, and I, I like to think that you can think of that as polynomials in the ZJ, or I could think of that as symmetric tensor products in the CD. Um, here, 
you don't we here we don't really have the as I kind of explained we, you don't really have the analog of, of of looking at functions on on half of the variables because there isn't kind of a half dimensional subspace on which the bracket is zero. So you um so the only thing you have you're, here you don't really have this but you do have this. Okay, and then, then then what you can do is you you can you can you can take um, so you can think of these two things separately, or you can take the the, the tensor pro take the tensor product of these. So you can kind of quantize if you quantize the the sum of the, the sum of these, you're taking the tensor product of, of, of these, these guys. And I and I just said a little bit last time that this is then if you take this tensor product, you get Something that mathematicians recognize as the um, sometimes you write it um, again as the 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 differential forms on R D. It's kind of functions on R D tensored with these this, this kind of finite dimensional algebra of these anti commuting gadgets. And this is but I mean, these are all these are complex values. So it's complex values differential forms on R D. And you ha and and the other thing that you have is on um, acting on you have so, so the Hamiltonian well if you if you in this case the the, the, the simplest kind of Hamiltonian that you can take on, on on these things is to take to take H to be the the um, uh, H to, be, H to be the, the Laplacian, it's just the sum of the squares of the second derivatives. But then, and then what, the, the fact that you've allowed your, that you've introduced these fermionic gadgets means that, that this guy is the sum, is actually a perfect square of two, of two operators, where D is an operator that, that, in, that acts on this, acts on these guys, increasing the degree by one, Delta is an operator that acts by decreasing the one, but it's it's the uh, story. So, 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 so that's kind of the story that I want to tell you so far. Okay, this is a review. Okay, now so so what we want to do today? So there's something. So 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 one thing that's spe that's special here was that we 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 um we took we took the, this this space to be um so so this always has to be um. Even dimensional, but th but this guy, this this, this this I mean, you can actually quantize kind of even odd dimensional phase spaces. There's no reason for this to be to be if if you want to do this kind of trick and and talk about things in terms of uh, annihilation creation operators and 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 take your states to be to take values in in here, then what you then you have to it has to be even dimensional, and you have to and then and then you can do kind of fermionic analog of Bargman Fock. But, but, but the same kind of story actually is, is interesting, even, you know, even in cases where you can't do Bargman Fock, like for instance, cases where, where this is odd dimensional. And so what I want to talk about today is kind of the simplest case where, where, where this is odd dimensional and you're going to be able to get, I mean, this, this kind of goes through the same, this kind of goes through in a similar way, but here you don't, you kind of don't have this but you do have you 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 still have this and you still have this and this you still have the psi j the basis elements and when you quantize you get gamma j and and it, and you still have the same story that you had here so, so let me just uh, let's see how that goes and it turns out what you get again it's something something which at least physically is kind of very important and just be that anyway it's going to be a Anyway, physically, basically, what you're going to get is going to be not just the a theory of a free of a free particle, but a theory of a free particle with spin one half. So, so today, what I'm talking about is this. So we're going to take um. Okay, so 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 we're going to take. Uh, 
Well, well, so maybe maybe the, 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 the most general thing that we can do is so 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 notice that in, recall uh, if we can do this can do fermionic quantization. For for any um, let me call it R R R S. So by this, what I mean is, is I mean the yeah, a, a, a real vector space where you have a, an inner product, which um, you know that w where there's a basis that it that the inner product is the standard thing, with, but with R positive signs and S negative signs. And then, then what happens? So, this, so then a basis, and you still have the basis of the. Sorry, you still have these basis elements, but now the kind of this kind of plus plus all bracket of them of these guys with themselves are going to be plus or minus one, depending upon you're going to be R of them are going to give you a plus, S of them are going to give you a one. And then what you have in, in quantization, uh, say, uh, gamma j's, and 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 the, and the gamma j's satisfy. Um, so gamma j, gamma j, gamma k. The plus the anti commutator of these is um, two delta j k. Well, but then there, there there's a plus or minus there. So depending upon whether you're one of the r pluses or one of the r s neg negatives, you're going to have um, you have a, pl a plus or minus. Okay. Um, okay. And then now, now the problem with this. So, so when we start doing this, notice that this is um, so the gamma and, and the, the gamma j um, generate a cliff of what we call cliff of R S. Okay. So it's the real it's a real Clifford algebra. Right? You're just allowed to take real linear combinations of things and Different values of R and S give you give you different ones, and so so this this and the, these things in general have, have a much more complicated structure. Of what they are, they're they're matrix algebras of various kinds, but they're um, they don't have this nice pattern that we saw in the uh, you know in, in the um, we, we had this fact. Um, or C, you know that, that this was. M of two to the d c, and then and 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 then the the odd and then the odd dimensional ones were um were two copies of this. You had this so so there you had a kind of a nice story. Here the story is more complicated. Except we did show again um you did we did show what happens for what happens if you in, in some low dimensional cases you can kind of work out what the what 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 the algebra is, just what's the algebra generated, I think, that satisfy this. And we did show that I'm going to clip that for 3, 0, R was S, so this was, this was a real, this is a real algebra just given by taking all the all the things you can do by multiplying gamma j's and gamma k's, and you can, but you can identify you can identify everything with two by two complex matrices. And so notice that um so here if we done this here let's see it was of q d plus one c so. And so if we if if we had 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 worked over the complexes here, and then there's no real different, then there's no way to tell the difference between plus and minus. 
invariantly, then you would have had that Cl Clifford, so recall, so compare to, to Cliff of 3C is So yeah, if we've been doing everything over the complexes to, the, to, to, to begin with, and then we, we were satisfying these relations that been allowing ourselves to take complex combinations of all these things, then we would have ended up with two, two different kinds of, um, of uh, two by two matrices. And what I, what, what I showed last, anyway, so, and, and, and in some sense, well, in some sense, you can see this, that if, if you have something, it's two by two complex matrices, and it's a real, it's a real vector space, that you're, you're only allowed to multiply by, by real numbers. If you, if, you, if, you, if you could take this and complexify and think of it as a complex vector space, now you've got the, your original real vector space plus i times another copy of it, and then so, 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 you, so you get this. So this is kind of what you would expect, that this is the complexification of this, but it, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a horrible thing to be doing because it's a you're starting with something that's already a complex vector space, saying I'm going to think about it as a real vector space and I'm going to complexify. This gets very confusing, but anyway, so we're not. But we're but, but what I'm doing today, we're we're not we're not doing this. Instead, I'm just we're just gonna we're gonna do this because because we're not interested in. Doing everything over the complexes and, and, and developing a fermion and being able to use a fermionic Bargman fog. We, we really just want to do this in, in one of these odd dimensional cases and then just have these guys. And here, so we have, um, we, we, we can, we have, um, so you, you can define the gamma j's here. The gamma j's are going to be for j is equal to one, two, and three. And you can define them just to be one over the square root of two. Um, that has a pally matrices. I think I got that right. Yeah, yeah. So you can, you can see that the um, that the, the, the pally matrices give you satisfy satisfy these relations with the pluses there, and the um, if I've done this right, and the and the, and, and then so, so 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 just looking at just the gamma j's give you the gamma j's just give you. You know some of the two by two complex. They give you the, they give you actually the Hermitian two by two complex matrices. If you then take um, you take gamma j gamma k. If you, if you multiply two, two of the, the two of these by these by themselves, it turns out you get something which is anti Hermitian. So these are the Hermitian ones, and, and the, the, these are the anti Hermitian. Ones. It turns out any any two by two complex matrix matrix you can write as a sum of Hermitian things and anti-Hermitian things. So so that's this this what this is what happens. But 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 don't but but we're but we're thing to watch out is we're we're not doing this. We really are are doing this. Okay, so okay. now. Go back to, So we're gonna. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do something just like I did when, when I was doing supersymmetric quantum mechanics last time. I took the, um, the bosonic. So the bosonic quantization is just going to be um, so H. H is going to be the bosonic thing tensored with. Fermionic thing, but but in this case, it's just so the bosonic thing again. It's going to be just like what I did supersymmetric quantum mechanics last time. You and we'll think of it not using um, Bargman Fock, but using the, um, the L just as L two of R three. Okay, so this is a, this is just what um 
And I, I, actually, so, so, so maybe, I, I guess maybe what, tri tri what I should say is what I'm doing is I'm quantizing thing R, R6, but bosonic plus R3. Okay, so this is the, this is fermionic. And this, you have the general Q1, Q2, Q3, Q1, Q3. And here you have, say, psi, psi1, psi2, psi3. And then when I, when I quantize these things, I'm going to get these Q and P, standard Q and P operators. And we're normally going to think of, of them as acting on functions of Q. So just be the multiplication operators and differentiation operators. And these guys, and these guys, when they get quantized, are going to be these, these are the things that are going to go to one over square root of two sigma j. The generator, so, so the generator is a Clifford algebra. Okay, but 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 what do they, so what do these what do these act on? So we, we can't do the um, we can't do the bargain fox trick and say that we're gonna you know, we're gonna act on some we're gonna have annihilation and creation of fermionic operators acting on a fermionic oscillator space of of anti-symmetric you know of anti-symmetric polynomials. But 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 we actually know that this that what these guys generate is the two by two matrices. So the obvious thing that the two by two matrices act on is the is the two-dimensional vector, two vector space. So, what, so the quantization is here. What these are going to act on is obviously just C2. Okay. Okay. And then the um. So so so, so what we so so the quantum system that we're going to have is going to be just 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 our completely usual basically our completely usual free particle system. But then instead, instead of just kind of one copy of the complex uh, of your wave functions being, you know, just complex valued functions on, on, on R3, they're going to be uh, C2 valued functions on. So they're going to be two, you're going to have two components. It's basically the same story you're used to, except you've got two component wave functions. Yep. Now, if we go back a little bit to the quantization, so on, on generators, So the, the, the relations you have here are, um, I mean, the, the non-zero kind of super the super Poisson brackets you have over here are the QJ um, P A on this is um, delta J J K, and then and and these guys satisfy what is it? They satisfy the theta. Is equal to again um, to to delta to delta yeah delta delta J K right so these these are the things. so 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 this is really just this kind of standard um, you know restricted to here this this kind of super Poisson bracket is just the this the standard. Um, you know, symplectic, symplectic form on, on, on here, the standard anti-symmetric thing, and restricted to here, it's just the, the standard symmetric thing. It's just the um, the diagonal, the you know, ones along the diagonal, because this, this is just the, this is coming just from the standard inner product on R3. Okay. So this is what it does on, on generators. And then once you know what this thing, uh, so this, so and so on generators, the relations are these guys, and and then all other ones are zero. Okay. So if you take yeah, I mean, the, they're, they're, the Q, Qs and Qs are zero, Ps and Ps are zero, Qs and 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 size are zero, Ps and size are zero. Okay, so so now you know what the, and then you can then extend that using the um, using the Leibniz rule again. You can extend this to any kind of polynomial in Qs and and and, and size. And then then what you can show, okay, so so then what you have is that you have so you, so on this guy. If we go back to our kind of pseudo classical picture, so pseudo classically, we can take the, we can take the Hamiltonian just to be the usual 
um, something that doesn't actually depend depend on these guys, but it's just the usual um, free particle Hamiltonian. So H is one over two m, um, you know, p one squared plus p two squared plus p three squared. Okay. So just the usual Hamiltonian, and and so it, so it looks like you know nothing from from from, from this point of view it. it it looks like really nothing is happening. In some sense, one reason you probably you, you probably never see this story in a physics textbook is because, you know, in in, in some sense, in, at, at the kind of level of, of the bottom line of what the states are that you're, that you're finally going to see, you're not you don't actually see anything interesting, because what's going to happen is that when you quantize, you're just going to get um, the standard kind of free particle Hamiltonian acting on this guy, and this guy's just going to go along for the ride. So, so that this this only becomes more interesting if you put in a magnetic field. If you put in a magnetic field, and then you then you get a coupling between the um, you get a coupling between the, the magnetic field and the and the spin variables, and then then something interesting happens. And uh, so 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 to make th th this only really becomes interesting when you couple two electromagnetic field. But but I don't want to actually do that now because the um, the real story about how you, how you generally couple couple to magnetic fields involves that you really have to change your p variables to uh, which are derivatives to covariant derivatives. So, so you, you really should be doing kind of a p goes to a p minus i e a where so you, you want to just you really want to change your p's to um, anyway or well this is you, 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 your, your, your key is to, to something that depends upon the, um, the vector potential of the electromagnetic field. But, but, I, but that, that we're going to get to that story later in the course, but, but not, not now. But, it, it, but so, so what, once, if you come to electromagnetic field, this all of a sudden, this becomes non trivial and interesting. But right now, it's you know, the stuff we're going to see today, there's not any real interesting physics. But there, but there is some nice mathematics. Yeah, so under this framework, like, how do we? Like, I remember previously you said that like spinner structure is not possible in two D. What? Which spinner structure? What? What? So like, or maybe I should just ask it directly. So is it possible to write down a vapor space where in the bosonic part it's two D, and then we have in the fermionic part still like maybe like the vapor space still C two. Um. Well, yeah, well, you, 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 you could do the same thing. I mean, you could, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so, so, so you, you could do this in, in any even dimension. I mean, the point, the thing that's special here is that the, um, the, the, here, here you've got, here there, there's a, here there's a matching between the, 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 the there's a matching between the, the dimensionality of these guys, and then the dimensionality of, the, of your configuration space. But I mean, yeah, you, you you could do this, and then I'm not sure what you're getting at, but 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 you're, you're, you 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 could do this for any. You could try and quantize it. You know, you know, here you only know how to do even things. Here you can do anything. I mean, you, you can do any one. I I think maybe the thing to say, and this is, this is what I was about to do in a minute, is that in order to get something something really interesting to happen, which is to have kind of a supersymmetry. So, so what we're gonna, what I, the next thing I was gonna show is that this guy is, uh, is basically is a perfect square, and that that's that requires, you know, that that yeah, the same trick will work if this is two D and this is D, but, but th that's where where I'm using this. Does that get at what you're asking about? Um, so just to make sure, because I thought last semester at some point you said that. Somehow, spin structure is not possible for two D. Oh, sorry. Okay, for for two, you, you're thinking. Okay, so so something. Well, it, if you're in, in R two, then then it, it just two two dimen I mean, two dimensions is just a little bit special. That that that's kind of a different thing. That, that that's just the fact that in um, you know, so so that 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 just corresponds to the fact that the um, well, yeah. I mean, so there's so two. You know, so I think all I was really saying there is that so so pi one of S O um, N is is Z two except for for N 
greater than or equal greater than two, but pi one of SO two is equal to z is is, is equal to z. Uh, I mean, so so. I don't know if that is this what I, is that, this may be what we were talking about. But the point is that you know the the way orthogonal groups and the whole story about spin works is kind of is fairly uniform in any dimension. Though there's this interesting if you actually construct this construct the spinners, you have to do it differently and even in odd dimensions. But either way you do it, you end up with that the quadratics and the, and the gamma and the gamma functions. If, the, if you exponentiate those, those be, those give you the spin group, which is the double cover of this guy. Okay, but now two dimensions is just a little bit special. That that you know two dimensions SO two is just a circle. So in, in, in SO two you can't you, you don't just have in, in these guys you just have kind of one. Anyway, you you have kind of one kind of non-contractible loop, and in, in, in this guy you can go around the circle any number of times and get so. Whenever you make statements about spinners and about spin groups and try to make them for all n, you often find that for n is for the for n is equal to two, you have to say something a little bit different. That's all. Okay, so that has nothing to do with the like uh, bosonic part of having how many dimensions. That, that is, I mean, I, I, that, that has really nothing to do with. I mean, actually, I mean, you you could think about that. So, I mean, you could actually try doing this for. Um, Let's see, just for, for two dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do this for R2, does it work? Yeah. A anyway, I mean, you, 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 could try, you could try and come up with something even a little bit simpler than what I'm talking about. You could come up, try to think about a two dimensional theory or even a one dimensional, even a one dimensional theory where your phase space is two dimensional. And then, and then you could add, you, you could try and see what the analogs look like. And, and you and you you then might run into this problem that the um, the way spin behaves is, is, is a bit different, but it's yeah it's, it's different. Yeah. All right. Okay. 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 Anything else? Okay. So but, but yeah. So so the next the, the next next thing I wanted to do was was to kind of get get back to where we were um, last time, which is to is to explain that. So last time I was setting up. Um, these these supersymmetric quantum systems where the Hamiltonian was a was a, a square, and here I want to what I want to show is that, that this is another one, but it, it of a different kind than the ones we talked about last time. The ones we talked about last time had the had the you know the same number of of anyway the bosonic phase space and the fermionic phase space with the same dimension. Here the fermionic phase space is half the dimension, but we still are going to have a an example of a of, 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 of being able to take a square root of this, and, and and one way to see it is just is just this. That this is just um. You can write this as one over two m times. Let's see. I want to write this. So you can uh, sum raise from one to three p j k. Okay. Okay, so, so, so one way of, of saying of, of seeing it is that is that you can break this guy down into something simpler by just looking looking at um so 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 looking at the gadget you get by taking p1 times psi one plus p2 times psi two plus p3 times psi three. Take that gadget. And now if you if you compute the, the super Poisson brackets. And you, you have to use the, um, the Leibniz rule and use the fact that the p's, the p's super commute with each, yeah, the p's Poisson commute, p's Poisson commute with each other, and the p's and psi is Poisson commute with each other. So the only non-zero thing you're going to get are is the terms when you expand this out from the psi j's and the psi k's. So meaning that what you're going to get is this. You're going to get the sum. Yeah. Sum over j k, so you have two sums. Oh, sorry, j. Well, maybe do it this way. K, k, k. So you can have two sums, and then you have a p j. And if you keep track, of, if you are careful about ordering, which doesn't doesn't actually matter here, then you, you get something like this. 
Okay. But this thing it, it, it is just the. Um, but anyway, but but but, but th this works because this guy is just it's just this guy it's just the, and so 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 this is sorry yeah. Anyway, as you expected, so so the sum over j. So 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 it works. So 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 you know so so the kind of you know the the, the analog of the um, the Hamiltonian operator being being a perfect square in the um, in kind of the super Poisson bracket language. It, it's just that the uh, the um, you know, a, a, H is the Poisson bracket of something with itself, okay. and uh, is the super Poisson bracket of something with itself. And then when I so when I quantize now now when I quantize this, okay, so 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 this is the whole kind of pseudo classical way of thinking, but but this is the pseudo classical version of the Hamiltonian being a being a perfect square. Okay, okay, so so th this is all kind of. You know, using this kind of Lie super algebra and super Poisson algebra business, but from the from the point of view, I mean, from from the point of view of what we're, the bottom line is just going to be that that when you quantize this thing, this operator is, is just is, is going to be a perfect square. It's going to be the um, and let's just let's just, let's just write it out. So, so this gives you that the um, so what the, what this says so this implies so quantizing and this this this, this gadget that I created the sum from j is equal to one to three p j psi j becomes this guy just becomes the differentiation operator or, or well or the your p operator if you like. And then this guy becomes one of your one over square root of two times your Pauli matrices. So this is a one over square root of two PJ. Um, so this is the sorry. So there's a, there's a sum. So so you can think of this as being a. So this is kind of a two by two matrix of, of of these operators. So this this is a or if you think of it in terms of um, you know as acting on configuration space, this is a this is a two by two matrix differential operator. It's got a because you've got these derivatives and then these guys are going to put them in various places. You can figure out what they are, what they what they are. There's going to be some d by some derivatives in the three direction along the diagonals, and the off-diagonal ones are going to be complex versions of the derivatives along the one and two direction. So, so this is kind of, this is kind of an interesting, it's an interesting, um, you know, matrix matrix value differential operator. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then the actually, I try to see if I want. I'm trying to decide whether so yeah actually maybe before before I go on go on and do do more do more with this oh actually let me let me sorry let me finish this one thing that I want to do here then so so then then what you have is that then 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 your Hamiltonian operator is one over two m and and the um the super Poisson bracket becomes a super Commutator, which is now an anti-commutator because these things are odd, and you get this guy. Two, so this is so I'm just I'm just writing this this way, and then this is an anti-commutator, and but this is. One over two m. Anyway, 
if you if you calculate this thing, you're going to get one over two m, and then a a sigma vector dot p vector squared. There's going to be so there's going to be two there's going to be two two of these guys, and then a half. So that so the two and the half cancel, and you get just this. But but if you work out what this is, because the sigma matrices, um, you know, anti anti commute with each other, you're going to have um, when when you expand this thing out, you're going to get one over two m times just the p one squared plus. Just because of the properties of the sigma matrices, when you when you if you take it. This kind of square, you're going to get, you're going to get this guy. So you get so so this is so so your Hamiltonian in this language. You know, anyway, so your Hamiltonian is just the free particle Hamiltonian, but it's acting on, it's it's acting on C two. So you say so, so you so you have to think of this as being kind of really, you know, zero, one over two m. You know, zero zero and then p vector squared. It's, it's, it's really this, but it's it, it's so and, and, and it's acting on 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 on, 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 two, on two by two wave functions. But it looks but, but but there's really kind of nothing interesting happening as far as the spinning rates are, are free to markets are concerned. And again, there's something interesting will only happen if you couple to electromagnetic field. But the but 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 the interesting thing here is that you uh, you did actually write this. You do actually have this. Interesting new fact is that is that if you if you do think about this spin degree of freedom, you're in terms of the spin degree of freedom, the Hamiltonian is actually a perfect square. An and, and, and so and so there are interesting things that we can that's what we're gonna try to, to do some stuff with this today. Okay, and maybe now before I get more into this, so let me just tell you that jet this it's the same kind of trick. Works in general. Um, I should say. Let me see. I don't want to do. Yeah. So, so in, in general, for any for for R R S. So again, if if you work in any dimensions and you take you know, R, you could take the standard metric with R positive signs and S negative signs. Then what you can do is, is you can take, um, you can define, let's see, just that, that, that the Laplacian, which, which is the derivative, the D, let's show it this way, which is, the derivative with respect to the q1 plus so all, all plus signs so so r plus signs plus p minus yes anyway i'm just So if you take anyway, so if you take the, the Laplacian with R positive signs and, and S negative signs, that you can you can use the um, yeah if, if if you instead of looking at the Laplacian on um, on functions, look at the Laplacian on uh, on spinners, on the thing which the Clifford algebra acts on, then you're going to have um, so, so on um, spin, uh, on fu functions valued in spinners. And spinners. Yeah, what you have is that this guy is 
This, it, it, this guy, this guy again, is is a perfect square, and he's the. Um, this guy is you take the sum from j j is equal to one up to the total dimension r plus s of gamma j um, d d. Well, I, I, I guess I um. Well, yeah. Let's just d e q j. Squared. So this is this guy's a perfect. This guy. This guy's a perfect square. And this. So, so let me kind of then write this up here. So let's just say this. So, so, this, so here's the definition. The Dirac operator. Um, so R. Rs is Z slash, which is just that it's just a sum to uh, R plus S. Anyway, gamma J. It's just, it, 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 it's just this guy. And 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 it satisfies and um and, 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 and satisfies d slash squared is um is is, is the standard notion of the Laplacian. And so 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 this was what um kind of the amazing thing that that, that Dirac discovered and worse and so we'll we'll get to this later later in the class when we get to the note the, inter the interesting and relativity. So so the um Physically, you know, so 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 Dirac um, Dirac's discovery was he realized that here you had that um here you had uh, R S is equal to three one. So if you if you do if you do special relativity, then you can think of space time as having um, you know the special relativity is based upon the idea that there's an invariant. Um, standard metric on space time, which has three positive signs and one negative sign with a negative sign for time. And then, and so Dirac did, did, did this, discovered that in this case, then then gamma, and then this guy is is, is called the Klein -Gordon, Klein Gordon operator. Operator. And and the C slash is is the yeah, yeah is Dirac's. So we'll, we'll get to this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I have a question. So, how do you define here the you know, Q space or in, in the space R, RS? Like, uh, is it the same as this, the, the RM? Well, it, it, it's it, so, so R of R plus S, you should think of this as being what this is, is just the. Um, it, it, so, 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 this is just. This is just R, so, so so this is R of R plus S with inner product effect of um, the inner product of V vector and W vector is you know V one W one plus up to V R W R and then minus V R plus one, W plus one, hey, W R plus one, minus V S W. I mean, it's a little bit complicated, but but all on all on this this is real. This when I say this, all I mean is just that the, the normal vector space with the dimension given by the sum of R plus S, but on the first. R variables, it's a standard inner product, and and then the next S variables, it's it, you have to put in a minus sign in the, in the inner product. Okay. So you mean the L two function do not need to? Well, it, it's a, so, so, so 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 this then becomes so is your L two function defined R R S or something? Okay, well, well, so 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 this is this is just a the inner product. Okay, so 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 this is just the inner product on the vector space itself. 
Okay. And, and, but 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 you're right, man. But you're, you've done something really funny. I mean, this, this inner product is very very funny, and I think it, it's not really emphasized how how big of a problem. I think mathematicians realize this, but physicists don't immediately realize how the fact that you've you've decided to use an indefinite inner product. This inner product, you know, is is, is normal inner products are positive unless unless your vector is zero. This inner product is. Positive on on something is you know, uh, if you, you know so 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 the problem you mean is, positive sorry, sorry, on yeah. time like or space like yeah what, what the, the problem here is that so if, if you compute if you compute the length of something if it's um you know if if s is zero then this is a nice positive definite number right if, but 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 this can can be it, it can be positive, it can be zero, it can be negative. So you've got, you know, you've got vectors, you've got negative size vectors and zero size vectors, and that actually causes a lot of trouble. And, and one thing it's going to cause trouble with is if you try and, you know, if so one of the big problems with trying to do relativistic quantum mechanics, and we'll, we'll get to this later, is that if you try and, the, the invariant inner product has this property that, you know, sizes of things can be negative. And so if you try and then use, this is just the inner product on the on the, on the space space itself. But if you try and use this to induce an inner product on the, um, on the functions, you're gonna have this problem. You're gonna have all sorts of positivity problems. Okay, yeah. So, but that's, so that's, so that, but, but that, but, but so, so far we actually haven't, I mean, this is really at this point. I'm just kind of a, a little bit of a motivation, just mainly for why, <laughs> what what this means. When people talk about the Dirac operator, they're typically talking, you know, about about this thing in the in the case R three one. This is the this is what physically. But 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 you can you can do this for any values of R and S. Okay, and, and in some sense, you know what what I wrote down this this um the thing that I wrote down this kind of sigma. This sigma sigma matrix, this poly matrix is dotted with the um, with with the derivatives or dotted with a momentum operator. That's kind of a, that's kind of a that's that was kind of the um, so t so today today I'm, I'm just looking at r three zero. I'm just I'm just looking at this case and this so, so and, and this is where we're getting the sigma vector dotted with if you like the grad vector. So 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 here. It's just this doesn't have these weird the weird properties of the minus signs, and, and but we're going to see we'll see a lot of that later in the class when I talk about special relativity. But it, but it was it was more just kind of uh, say that you know, when people talk about the Dirac operator, they, they basically mean they mean this construction in, 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 in this special case. Okay, and that's what physicists mean. Um, mathematicians. You know, think of this more generally as, as but, but they generally they also generally mean that you know this construction in, in some arbitrary signature, like that. Or or or, or often the mathematicians are, are typically are typically interested in the in, in the cases where where s is zero just for for arbitrary dimensions, because, because these cases where s where you introduce negative signs. Anyway, it, it, it makes the mathematical problem quite different. Okay. Anyway, so that's so, so. Just as an aside, that's that's what the what the Dirac operator is. So so you're you're seeing a special case today of this, and um and, and you're going to see later on when we do special relativity, you're going to see you're going to see this case, and um it turns out that you know the when you do special relativity, the analog of the Schrodinger equation is to have the equation where you know that that this guy acting on your generalization of a wave function is is zero, and that's called the Klein-Gordon equation. But it, it, but you know if you introduce um, introduce spinners and, and not just scalar functions, then then it, it, be, it has a square root, and it becomes a Dirac equation. And then the, the kind of amazing fact about the world is that all the the elementary particle matter particles we know about actually, you know, their wave their wave functions take values in the spinners and, and the the Dirac equation is the right equation. So, so there's something very, anyway, at a deep level, physics is telling you that this, this is important. Okay, um, let's see. 
let's see. So I want to go back to so so now what I, I wanted to so if we go go back to what to where I was before, and if we're in, in, in this special case, as I said, in some sense, you know, the fact that we're not talking about coupling to electromagnetic field means that we we created something that's really physically quite trivial. But let me just write it down. Okay, so let's see. So it, it, it's, it's just that the, um, so, 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 and, and this I'll sometimes, so, so this will sometimes, I think it was actually, so even before Dirac, I think, you know, Pauli had realized that this is, that if you wanted to talk about spin one half, this was, I think both Pauli and Schrodinger knew that if you wanted to talk about spin, Fundamental spin one and a half particles in non relativistic quantum mechanics, you needed to uh, to put in the C2 degree of freedom. And so this was sometimes called the Pauli Schrodinger equation. And what it is, it is just, just to say that, um, you know, I, I, I DDT of your psi of T and Q vector is just just exactly the. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, let me actually let me write it up. Let me write it this way. Now. So it, it makes sure, let's make clear. Make sure that these are these are two component things. I don't want to call it psi. I'll call it psi one. Q vector. E, Q. Um, one over two m, and then what I'll, I'll and I'll explicitly write the fact that there's there's sigma sigma one pdq one two um, so I want to. So, 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 but 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 this guy. I mean, when you when you sum the the, the square, this this just becomes. Sorry, there's a minus. Okay. Minus, yeah. When if if you, um. Anyway, so but but, but this 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 guy, if you write him out, he really is just the pq one squared plus the. Right, so that's, that's so this guy really is just just a just a little positive. Okay, and and as I said, so so this you know in in, in this form, but before you introduce a coupling to electromagnetism, this is kind of silly. But the uh, the, the the and and you know so, so much more, more non-trivially, the pauli schrodinger equation is the same equation here, except where the derivative has become. Covariant derivatives and and, and and give you a coupling to, to a like magnetic field, and we'll see that later. Okay. Okay. So, so what is the for doing this? Wait, what? Like, what's the motivation for writing out the Pauli Schrodinger equation? Well, I mean, for, for I, I have one motivation. My, my motivation is just to to, to 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 say, hey, cool, isn't it cool that that this is a perfect square? And I want to do some things with that. If you were um, the, 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 the the more serious, the serious physical motivation is, that you don't really see until you couple to electromagnetic field. So if you want to write down, you know, anyway, yeah. So, so, so if, you, if you want to really understand kind of, you know, non-relativistically, you've got some electron and, and, and it's, you're, you're doing, you're, you're it's it's not no longer just a free particle. It's some um, it's coupled to electromagnetic field, and you want to see what it's doing as you change the electromagnetic field. You have to that, that, then it, well, yeah. Then in order to understand kind of what the right thing to do is, it's the best thing to do is to 
to, to realize that just to take this and replace place these by um like how it is. It, it, if you don't do that, if you just stick to this, then then you, what you miss is, is you, you actually miss the non-trivial way in which spin behaves when you couple to magnet to magnetic fields. Okay. So if, if, if you just uh, if if you didn't think of it this way, if you just thought, thought of it that way, you'd have no way of understanding that there's going to be a term where the spin and the magnetic field couple. But, but 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 what I want to do is I want to do something different with it. I, I want to just actually use this. Um, to, yeah. So 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 I want I want to study equations. Of this. Let me let me kind of say what motivation is. <laughs> and, uh, and and I'm not going to. I think I don't. I mean, it, it, it's this is something I kind of worked out in detail in the book, and and it, it's not so clear that it's it, okay. So there, there's a couple reasons why I did this here. One. I'll explain kind of one motivation that, that, that this kind of answers a, a question that that, that should have cut, that comes up earlier when we we're talking about representations of um, of of the um, of, of the Euclidean group. But the, but the other thing, um, the other reason for for, for a, a lot of, the, of what I'm develop a lot of what I'm writing out is oh, okay. So let me just maybe I'll write this down. So motivations for what I'm. So, uh, so maybe let me say say what I'm going to do next. So 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 we want to want to understand and the um, the space of solutions. To this to this equation. And, and the mo motivations are really for two for two reasons. W one is what I'm going to do now, which is and an, which is to um, to show that this these give give irreducible e three of velocity. So one thing that you know, if you notice what I did is I, I tried to say something about the general theory of, you know, the Euclidean group is that you know the semi-direct product of rotations in three dimensions and translations in three dimensions. I tried to, uh, I tried to kind of say, you know, look, the, the general theory of these things is that you, um, is that you've got two Casimirs. You've got the, the the kind of p squared Casimir, which is just gives you some number, and then you've got this. Casimir coming from from another source, and 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 that that guy has either integral or half integral values, depending upon whether you're you're allowing, you know, SO three or double cover of SO three, and so the and, and I and I and what I kind of said before was that the um, if you take the um, solutions of the free particle Schrodinger equation three dimensions at a fixed energy, you get an irreducible represent. You get you get one irreducible representation of the um, uh, of, of of the of e three, but the um, but but it was just the represent that gives you the representation with helicity zero. So I claim that there are these other representations with with higher values of the higher half integral values of the helicity, but I didn't say, tell you how to construct them. And here the claim is going to be that the the solutions of this guy, the solutions of this guy give you. You know that they, they have contained in here, but in, in, in a in a subtle way. Not not, not you, you can't just take the top will give you one, the bottom will give you another. You have to kind of break up the space of solutions of the equation in, into two pieces in an interesting way. And one of them is going to be the irreducible representation with the helicity half. The other is going to be the irreducible representation with helicity minus a half. That's what I, I wanted. That's that was what, one of my motivations for this. And then the, the second motivation is what we'll come to later. Is that the um, is that is that so non-relativistic quantum field theory the Q of T is really comes from basically you would one way of thinking what you do of, of how to of how to do this is to um, to take take the space of solutions. As your phase space, 
And so, so, so this, so this is this sort of th quick thing that I'm going to get to in a, in a week or so. In a week or in a week or two, I'm going to start talking about okay, let's you know, what if we don't want to just describe one particle? We want to describe arbitrary numbers of particles, and we want it so we have we construct these things. We want to work with these things called fields, and we and the whole but 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 one way of thinking about the whole thing we're doing is that we're just uh, we're taking as our phase space the space of solutions of some wave equation, and and what I and what I want to do is, is claim that if you want to talk about non-relativistic spin one half particles and you want to to do like what the um the pe the people who are doing in this matter want to do, which is to describe arbitrary numbers of these things, well you want to take you want to look you want to find the space of, you want to find the solutions to this equation. And that will give you an infinite dimensional space, and then you want to, 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 you know, to take that as phase space and quantize. It. So, 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 so this, this, this is coming later, but, but this is what I want to finish talking about today. So that's the motivation. Okay, so let me let me kind of go through go through this a, a little bit quickly. I mean, I kind of worked out anyway. I worked this out in more more detail, but um, partly. Because it's a, it's a simple example of kind of more complicated phenomena that we'll see later. But let me. But this this is this is what what, what I'm going to try to say it about right now. Okay. So if you if you want to think about the the, the space of solutions of this thing, you want to you want to go to momentum space. Um, let's see. Okay. So recall. So in momentum space. So the Fourier transform and, and you know you know whenever you're trying to solve some translation invariant some free particle theory, you, you mean you go to momentum space and then it everything it becomes everything decouples there. And so so what you would have is that um so it, it, in, in momentum space it it you get one over two m So, uh, the Fourier transform. Look for, you know, look, find, find uh, solutions of energy E. So, so it's where E is the eigenvalue of the Hamiltonian. So what what this then means that one over two m sigma vector dot E vector of let's do it of So, so remember that in the um, oh sorry, this is a square, square, square. Okay. So, when when we did when we did this just for the um, for 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 the the kind of one component free particle, then you just had that p squared over two m is equal to e. Okay. So you so you just had that your uh, so so what one component. You, you, in, in three dimensions, you just had that um, yeah, p vector squared is that solutions exist for p squared over two m equal to e. Okay, or and, and one way of thinking of this was that if you took if you're in three dimensions, you just and, and you just took some 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 sphere in in, in, in p vector space and took took it to have ra radius um, so the, the radius vector is equal to square root of so this is this is two me so this is the square root of two me so. So 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 so, so, the, so the general solution. This is for one component case. The general solution is a um, is a function 
on the sphere in P space of radius. Uh, okay. So so anyway, so so for the one, in the one component case, it was that. Or, or actually, and in some sense, what's happening here is the general solution is just um, so. So the, the, the general solution is just kind of two copies of that. So the general solution is going to be so here. Um, you get you know two um, two functions. On the sphere. Okay. So, 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 so in, in some sense, nothing that interesting seems to be happening. But and, and you, you but and, and but the, the but the, I guess I guess the thing that that's that's thing that that's interesting is is if you um uh, this is sorry where are you? okay so so but 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 you you can use the fact that you can use the fact that this is a perfect that this is a square to instead. Instead, look for solutions to um, uh, so sigma vector dot e. Over p vector. Okay, so so the size so the size of p vector is going to be square root of two m e. This this guy acting on psi one, and that, now now these these are now wave functions. These are constant energy wave functions. Now these are wave functions of energy e, and they depend on p. So is equal to plus or minus um, so 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 what we want to do is is we want to not 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 only um you know diagonalize the, not, not only find eigenvalues, eigenvalues of this guy, which is the Casimir operator, but we also want to use the fact that this guy, that sigma dot, dot p vector over p. So if, if you think of this as, a, as an operator, you know, is the is the helicity well? Yeah. Anyway, I shouldn't. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, okay. Okay. Let, let me let, let me say this a little bit better in a minute. But but what, but, but 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 this is the idea: is that we, we want to find we want, we want to find things not just where sigma dot p is 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 is, is um, sigma dot p squared is two m e time that that the, that these solve sigma dot p squared gives you. Um, that their eigenvalues for that with eigenvalue two m e. We want to also use the fact that it's this perfect square, and, and we want to instead find eigen. We want to also break this finite energy subspace up into two pieces: the the, the plus eigenvalue and the negative eigenvalue. Okay. So 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 so, and and this is what's going to give us our. Um, So this is how we get how we get so we get the, we get the two the two irreducible velocity plus minus one half reps of e of three. It's by taking one, you know, constant energy 
you know, you know, eigen value value of t squared over two m is equal to e, and then then two that 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 th th this guy who you know minus plus or minus or minus here. So it so so what so what we're do, what we're doing anyway. If we want to ask this kind of very mathematical question of, you know, if if you act in so so maybe this is where this gets confusing. So 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 what we're, we want to do is we want to um, let me say this here. So we have so so e of d acts on l on h is L2 of R3 plus C2. Okay. But what's going to, so, but, but this is going to be the, the usual. Okay, so, so, so sorry, E3. So, 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 so the way uh, Euclidean Group, group is going to act on this guy is so the translations are not going to do anything really interesting. The translations are just going to, you know, they're just going to translate. They're not going to do nothing here, and they're going to just translate this guy exactly the same way you had before. So, the translations, you know, they're they're generated by momentum operators. That the, the translation story is exactly the same. Nothing interesting has happened in the translation story. But but the um, oh, and, and what I should say actually is that it's the double cover. So. So this is equal to e to the R three of translations, but then semi-direct product with SU two, with this the spin three, the double cover of SU three. But now this guy, okay. So so, so this guy, this SU two is what does something interesting. The SU two acts in in the way that you you're used to on here. It's just the induced action from the ro rotations in the, on, on space, right? But but it also but it also acts on the C two, and then it, but it just acts by the spinner representation. That these are, you know, and, and the spinner representation on C two is just the standard representation of S U two. So let's just say this. So, so the S U two this so, so this acts. And wave functions by um, there. by psi one of that here Goes to uh, so well uh, q vector q vector um, r so you, you you do the inverse rotation on q vector I mean, So, so you, you, you do the usual thing. You just, you just, you, you, you take, you know, when you in, when you do this, in, when you're inducing from the action on the action on functions from the from the action of the space which their functions on, you have to have an inverse here. But it's the usual thing. But but then, the but th then you, you you take the fact that this guy is then, um, what I, I mean, what do I, what do I call this guy? I call this omega. Omega, where omega, where 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 yeah, so where omega is an element of S U two, and then uh, R is is equal to. I think I think I call this map big phi is uh is you, you take you take you take omega and then you project down project down. Is that right? S O three. 
so 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 you, what you're just doing is you're pay, you're you're acting on this. But these these are just two by two unitary matrices. They're just and you're just, you're just this is just a standard rotation of spinners. But the um the, the way you're acting on space is just by the uh, you know it, the, the spin transformation you've got corresponds to two actual rotations when you project down, and it's um. It's uh, and, and so 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 R is is that guy. So for each R, there are two possible omegas, but but we're we're acting on it by the omegas. Okay. okay. And anyway, so I gotta get to the end of this before. I, but there's there's a, a bunch of, of technology for doing this. So, so this is what happens at the group level. So then at the um, at the at the Lie algebra level. So, so, so this is so the corresponding. Let me see right. On the, the algebra representation. Also, Professor, your your arrow in, in the last line it, it means equality, right? Um. Does it mean equality? No. I, so, 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 so I, 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 I guess I should say that this is the um, maybe a bit, I mean to, to say the equality. Okay, so, so if, if I think of my my rep, my rep, I've got a representation of of I've got a representation of the um, Euclidean group, and I'm taking the, the, the zip, no, no translation, but and and then this um this this SU two rotation omega. So this, so 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 the um, the representation on this element of the Euclidean group, it, it, it acts on these functions by 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 get, by, by turning them into this. Okay, so I'm writing out. I'm, I'm writing. So yeah. So, so this that arrow just meant that this is how the representation acts. But, but that's what I mean. And so so now what I'm doing is I'm I'm, I'm some sense. I want to differentiate this guy. I want to, you know, I want to take pi. I want to take the derivative of this guy, and and, and then I've got um. Anyway, this then I then I've got p operators, on the, but it, but I'm not. I mean, translations were just it just acts the translations just acts in the normal way. But the uh, but but the derivative of this guy you know, so it doesn't do any interesting with translations. But the derivative of this guy then is going to be something that depends upon where you are in the Lie algebra of SU2, right? And that's going to be, um, what did I want to call it? Um, well, well, pi prime. Anyway, so, 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 so the, the derivative, the differentiated version of this guy is going to be, is going to, is going to correspond to um, what, it's going to correspond to the operator that, that, that physicists normally call the, the total momentum operator. It's going to be, um, anyway, there's, a, and, and again, there, there's an i here, and I have to, well, i, I j, j vector, which is L vector plus S vector. So, 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 so this is the thing which corresponds to, to this. That this, is, this is the standard orbital angular momentum. So this is just the, you know, the infinite. This is the operator course that tells you what happens if you do infinitesimal rotations on the cues. Okay, it's a standard. It's a standard. This is a standard orbital momentum operator, and th and this guy is just going to be the, exactly what you're used to, and he's doing the same, and he does the same thing to psi one and to psi two. So this is just two copies of the usual orbital angular momentum. I know. Okay, th but, but th this guy it, it, it is what's interesting, and this guy corresponds to what what you're doing here. Okay, so 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 th so this is really you can also think of this as a tensor product of C two times the functions and and so w whenever you take the you differentiate when you when you have an action on a tensor product when you take the Lie algebra action you get a, a sum of two pieces one of which acts on L two and leaves the C two alone and one of acts on C two and leaves the L two alone 
and, 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 and this guy is just the thing which is a half sigma vector. So this is just the, this is just the standard spin, spin negative momentum. Okay, so I think, yeah, I think I better stop, stop here. But so, so, so the, the details. I mean, there are more details of this kind of that are, that are worked out here. But, but the basic idea is that this yeah, is that the, the right way to think about, you know, the interesting thing that's happened by by taking two copies of the standard. Um, when we've taken two copies of the standard free particle thing and thought of them as a C2, and, and, and we've uh, the interesting thing that's happened is, is one one we can take we can take the square root of the Hamiltonian, but the other is that we can we can now make the rotation group act in a more interesting way. So it, it, we can make the rotation group act. So if we didn't do this, what we what would have here is we would have two copies of the spin zero representation. We would have two copies of the scalar. We would have just two copies of what we've done before. The fact that I've that I'm doing this, and then and then I and, and then I'm and I'm doing this, and, and this whole phenomenon of spin is getting into the picture, means that we, we, we don't we don't actually have two we don't have two decoupled copies of the spin zero re representation. Instead, we have we have the of, of the helicity zero representation. We have that we have actually the helicity plus and helicity minus. And and you you can't see and to see them you have to you have to act on on, on this you, ha, you have to do this sigma vector dot p vector or p vector psi one psi two is plus or minus psi one psi two and 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 picking out picking out one of these picks out like the helicity one half irreducible representation picking out the other one is at helicity and have minus here is our representation. Okay, so we've done something. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that so 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 from the anyway. I, I guess you, you you see this in the in the physics point of view. You know when you re, when, when you realize that wait a minute. You know this what you what we thought was just a, a free uh, two copies of the free particle equation. That when you started talking about angular momentum and seeing what angular momentum conservation does. You had you you were at you added in this guy, and the fact that you added in this guy to the total angular momentum operator meant that you were actually you were actually act when you when you acted by rotations on the whole thing you, you, you were putting in this this x u two action on, on on the whole thing, okay. And then if you want to get ir, the, the irreducible representations of this action of the Euclidean group now, you have to. Yeah, you can't just look at this component or look at this component. You have to pick out. Um, you have to find solutions of this guy. And maybe let me just say, say a bit about the solutions to this equation. So, so what's happening? Remember, so 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 so, so this only depends. This only depends upon the length of p vector. So this equation, you you can think about it. What it's doing on a um, on this on a sphere, so this is a sphere with, um, anyway, you, you can think of the sphere with radius one if you like, but it, it, this doesn't depend on the radius, but, but this operator does by the radius. So now, if you're at some point, if you're at some point here, so what, what's it, so what's happening is that you actually have a, your, your solutions are R to C2. Okay, so I'm writing it as a, it's kind of an R2, but you should think of a C2. But what's happening is that the, the C2, there's, you've got a, uh, you, you've got a plus, you've got a C, kind of a plus, and a C minus. Okay, so you, you've got the plus solutions here, and you've got the, and, and the minus solutions are some other space. So there, so, so what you're doing is that at, 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 at every point on the sphere, you've got C2 is C plus plus C minus. But the, 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 the problem is that this, this kind of decomposition here depends upon where you, uh, where you are in the sphere, okay? So what you're doing is you're, 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 you're picking out, like if you just decide I wanted to solve this guy, you're picking out a one-dimensional space here 
but and but at, at some other point it's going to be a different one dimensional space. Okay, so and, and what you're going to get, it, you, you get you get a very interesting mathematical structure is what you get. What you do is you get that some solutions solutions with plus. Are um, C two valued functions on S two lying in uh, C inside of C two that that varies it's depending. On, on where you are. Okay, so it, it, it's a slightly weird. So, so there's um. So, in in, in some sense, you know, there's. In, 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 in some sense, what you can do is is you can write a general solution. A general solution is just. A, uh, it's just a complex valued function. The general solution of this is just a complex valued function on a sphere, but the complex line that, 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 that it lies in moves as you move around. And so I, I don't want to, um, anyway, I've, I, I worked out, there, there's a lot of the details of this are kind of worked out in there. It's a bit, um, it's kind of a, a fun thing, but there, there's one, one reason for, for, thing, for, for looking at this is that this is actually kind of the simplest example of a really, really important structure which occurs in mathematics. That this is called a, um, so let me just say, so C2, the C, no, so functions. Okay, okay, okay so this, yeah, well, this, this, this kind of C, well, let's just say that C valued function. On um, on S two with where where the C sub C two varies are called all right, it, one way I think of it then is they're called called kind of twisted functions. C, but they're and, and and the more technically they're actually sections of a, C, of a vector of a C bundle over S two. So 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 this. The more, the more general nonsense is, is to say that, that what we're what we're doing is that we're taking instead of instead of thinking about about, about the same c everywhere on c two and, and taking normal kind of functions, we're, we're we're making the c vary as you move around over c two, and then the and if the values of your functions take different values and, and, and take values in this different c, we call them twisted functions, and then we call the the kind of family of all those C's that move around as, as you move around or around S2 is called a, a vector bundle over S2 with a fiber C, and these functions are called sections of it. So, so anyway, this is just a... I mean, so, so I have a question. So yeah. this, this kind of C, the, the, I mean, the C value of function you know, maps the sphere to C, uh, to C star? To, to the, to the no, so yes, no, so so what you're so so you're 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 mapping, yeah. So your your functions are just they're they're just taking a value, yeah. So 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 for each there I mean, the so for a point you have a vector you have a vector in C two and then you you like you divide the first one by the second one and that number is mapped to C star. And it doesn't depend on. It's nothing to do with C star. I think that the thing to do is just to say, look, if if you um, if you forget about this helicity nonsense, then so, so solutions of 
of this Pelly Schrodinger equation are just functions on uh, are functions on, on the sphere which take which, which take value anywhere in, in a C two and 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 the C so the C two is the same C two everywhere okay but but if 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 I say aha I, I don't want to look at an, an arbitrary solution I want to look at one with helicity plus half or one with helicity minus half and I'm, what I'm saying is that if you also say that my solution has to have helicity plus half then that restricts it to for for each point for each value of p there's a there, there's a specific one dimensional subspace of c2 that you have to lie in so your your function is going to be it's going to take values kind of you know i don't know yeah your your, your, your function is going to for, for every value in this value in the sphere you're going to get a value but but that that but that value is always going to lie in a in, in a in, in a specified one-dimensional subspace, but that one-dimensional subspace is changing, and 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 the the, the kind of interesting thing about about this equate about this particular equation, this kind of sigma vector dot p vector over p vector psi is plus or minus psi is I mean so so, so so this picks out a very interesting family of one-dimensional subspaces, and it's called a um. It's kind of the simplest example of what we call a, a non-trivial bundle. You can't, there's no way to kind of, there's kind of a topological obstruction to kind of, to trying to choose coordinates in which you kind of move. In, there, there is no kind of choice of coordinates in, in, in which you kind of even things out. In, in, in which, I mean, it, 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 it's, not, it's, it's, the, it's the basic example of what we call a non-trivial vector bundle. So, so I'm, there's a whole huge area of mathematics that this gets into, but I mean, it really is, in some sense, it, it's a very simple-minded equation. And, and in the notes, I even, I, I, you know, I explicitly write out in coordinates what the solutions to this look like. You can write them down, and you can, um, and you, you can play with these things. But it's, uh, I just kind of wanna wanted to point that this kind of very simple-minded picture points you in, in, in the, the direction of kind of you know where a lot of non-trivial geometry and topology goes, where you that which is kind of based upon examples like this, and where this is, and and, and if you start studying these things, this precise example is exactly the the first kind of really interesting and non-trivial example. So it's it's just another example, kind of a a lot of really kind of tricky and beautiful and subtle mathematics kind of buried in what looks like a really simple problem. That's it, but the um. For, for, from our point of view, that the bottom line is just is just that I wanted to characterize the uh, helicity plus half and the helicity minus a half um, so, solutions of the uh, uh, irreducible representations of the of the of that action of the um, uh, Euclidean group, and what they are is they're they're functions of the sphere, but functions of the sphere that are constrained to lie in these particular. Um, in this particular subspace, and one problem I think, I mean, one thing it gets a little bit interesting to think about, which is also I think in the um, there may, which I worked out, and it may be even one of your problems for next week is, is is then then to think about what's what's the right um, you know you have to then think about how do I describe what what's the right inner product of these functions, okay, yeah, so what's the analog of L two on these functions? And and so that that that's a, a little anyway that's a that's a tricky issue and I, I think I, I think that may be part of what's on the and it's, that's described in the last section of that that um that chapter and I think it, there may be something about it on the homework. But we'll go and, and anyway I may well anyway let me but any any questions about this stuff so I'm sorry that I kind of ended up this gets is going both going too fast and then at the end leaping off into kind of obscure deep mathematics, but that's, anyway, this is, this, this is, the, I think this is where I'm going to end this story for now. Any other questions? Okay. Well, again, if, if you, if there's anything else you'd like to talk about, or if you'd like to talk about some, or look at this some more, um, come, come back in a few minutes. I'll, I'll be, I'll be here for a while, for the next hour or so. And, um, and again, and then so 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 this in some sense is, is somewhat of an endpoint of the of the class. Then I next um, um and, and I, I may or may not on next Tuesday I may do a little bit of uh, 
summary of some things and go back to some things which I never really covered very well or which were on that last problem set. Or, and, then, and then we'll we'll start to go in, in, in other directions. But what you can see, what, one of the directions we're gonna go is to try to, it is to try to think about the, 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 space of, the space of solutions of this equation, which is an interdimensional space, and, and, and ask, you know, can we, um, what, if, what if we thought of that as phase space, and what if we tried to quantize it? And that's, and that's will take us into kind of quantum field theory. Okay. Okay, well, okay. So then bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.